welcome to XTV's Science Show. I'm Hannah Wakeford. And I'm Fiona Birch. And we are going to take you behind the scenes of science at the University of Exeter, asking you things you were dying to know. Things you didn't even know you wanted to know. Things that will scar you for life. Mm, maybe try to avoid that one. <laughs> We are standing outside the Physics Building on Exeter Streatham campus, home to the School of Physics and Astronomy, and host to over 400 undergraduate and postgraduate students, covering everything from astrophysics to nanomaterials, electromagnetics to biophysics. Today, we are going to venture inside to investigate the world of the astrophysics group and have a chat with a few of the postgraduate researchers that live there and generally have a nose around. So let's head on up and see what we can find out. So we are here in the astrophysics group on the fourth and fifth floors of the physics tower. And just to make sure you know where you are, they've got their name printed around the offices. Surrounding us are the offices of faculty members, postdocs and PhD students in the astrophysics group, which is one of the fastest growing groups in physics and astronomy. But what is astrophysics? Aside from looking at pretty pictures, Astrophysics is the study of all things occupying the universe. It's about taking a look behind the scenes at the underlying physics, the processes that govern how things in the universe are born, live and die. Learning about their chemistry, temperature, pressure and dynamics across vast regions of space. This requires astronomers to not only look in the optical region that our eyes and brain can interpret, but the whole electromagnetic spectrum from radio to gamma, revealing the coldest and darkest reaches of the universe. Here at the Exeter Astrophysics Group, researchers explore everything from the formation of galaxies and stars to planets and their atmospheres. By combining observations from world-leading telescopes with extensive computer simulations, they use the laws of physics to determine the true picture of an invisible universe. One of the computer simulations that's been developed here by Dr. Claire Dobbs explores the processes of star formation and how they shape the galactic structure. I'm joined by Moncho, a second year PhD student, who looks at these galactic simulations and takes them down to a more localised scale. Moncho, could you explain to us a little bit about what you actually do? Yes. Um, molecular clouds are the birthplace of the stars. So it's very important for us just to understand what processes create molecular clouds and how they evolve and die. So what I do is just take uh, some of the molecular clouds that Dr. Dobbs selected for me and increase the resolution and then I re-simulate them uh, so that we can just look at the details. It's like when you just zoom in on a picture in your iPhone or, or your iPad. So we also include some realistic effects like stellar winds or supernovae or... Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so supernovae and, and winds, what, what are they doing to these clouds, these simulations you've got? Well, they are technically called stellar feedback and they happen basically in massive stars. When you have a star really, really massive, um, they start meet winds, which are particles that, that flow away from the stars and also radiation, high energetic photons that may ionize the surrounding medium. Supernovae is just a catastrophic death of one of these massive stars. A and big a, explosion. Big explosion, really, really big. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest things in the universe right, right now. So when you've increased the resolution of these, these images, where are, you, where are you taking this in the future? What's the next step? Well, actually, there are a few big computers that have been designed now. And I think what we as a group here are trying to do is just to start from the big cosmological scales and get smaller, smaller scales. But we are doing it separately. So I think the future may lead us just to have a really big computer with tons of time and then just, just simulate everything from the beginning of the universe and see what happens, see if we get the galaxies and if within those galaxies we get the source, that would be amazing. So do you compare these to, to things that we can actually see out in space? Can you compare them to, to things that people are observing right now? Yes, actually I just finished a module that allows me to just create uh, simulated images. Like uh, I just take my cloud and project it in the sky and then see, uh, like try to do an image that would be like what 
you as an observer will just have from a telescope. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much and good Thank luck you. with your work. <laughs> Thank you. So I think it's time that we potentially head out and go look yes. at one of these. Uh, I think so, we need the coats. Yeah, I think let's grab our coats and we'll go head out to join Fiona on the roof. Okay. Yes, I'm on the roof of the physics building overlooking the university campus. Now I've managed to get this little telescope set up with the help of Alex, whilst Rob is getting ready to take some images with the larger telescope in the dome behind us. So Alex, what are we going to be looking at this evening? So tonight we're going to start by looking at M51. It's also called the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's the poster child for what Grand Design Spiral Galaxies look like. Okay. And then we're going to move on to looking at some globular star clusters. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi. Well, while we wait for the sun to set, thanks for joining us. And remember, the next time you're out and about, take a look up at the night sky.